I just wanted to get closer to my roots, know who I was. It's transformative in so many different ways. Just opened my eyes. It, it, it opened my eyes. I had heard about Chicano studies, but I didn't, was it really familiar with it as a field? No, that's why I'm thankful for, for the department because they really care about who was in the room. After I kind of acclimated to being a student on a community college campus, I, I just felt that um, I never wanted to leave. I was a first generation immigrant and I grew up close to the border in Chula Vista and my parents didn't, don't identify as Chicanos. Um, I, and, and I just, I had heard the word and the word wasn't always used in a positive way. I was the first uh, Chicano Studies instructor uh, to be uh, recruited to, to San Diego City College. And it was my privilege to, to be that. Within that first semester, we, we were our own department. So in the fall of 1970, I, I got hired as a, an instructor at San Diego City College to teach uh, Chicano Studies. I taught history and anthropology, the culture part of, of Chicano Studies to begin with. The thing that struck me first was the students in the class. I had never been in a college class that had so many brown faces. I mean, it was amazing. I said, wow, all these guys are college students. It was crazy. There were so many things going on. The farm workers movement was going on. You know, teachers were asking to how, why can't we organize something to get ourselves into the curriculum more? So we were all hunting wanting to organize, to do, to make changes in what was going on. At that time, the, the blowouts were going on in, at the high schools. Um, uh, that's another group that was very instrumental in, uh, in the establishment of Chicano Studies, uh, the high school. Establishment of Chicano Studies at San Diego City, it was all grassroots. You know, the, the, um, the established educational system was against it. I uh, enrolled at San Diego City College as a full-time student in 1970. I met the Chicanas here at San Diego City College. We were older than your typical college students. We had children, and but we were still very active. Our children were always with us. It was very important uh, for us so that we could learn more about our history that we were not exposed to in the public schools. You had um, Jack Sullivan, Cruz Rangel, you had uh, Gil Roblero, you know, Alicia Crow. Alicia Crow was a very nice person uh, that became our Chicana sponsor. Uh, she guided us in um, teatro. She was just a knowledgeable, uh, supportive, counselor and really laid out what you needed to do to get to ABC, right? But also if you just needed to talk to someone, she was there. One of the unique things about Chicano Studies at that time, especially at San Diego City College, I'm very proud to say that, <laughs> we made sure that the, 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 the classes were student-centered. By that I mean we allowed students to express themselves in terms of the curriculum. Cruz would always have a large class. He never had to worry about students. He also encouraged us to be active. You know, he participated with us, you know, and he would listen to us. We always made sure students were aware of what was going on and actually gave them a voice. I solicited opinions from students because you know what? This is going to affect them because believe it or not, sometimes students are a little more eloquent than the professor. In the Chicano Studies Department, we felt even more responsible to make a difference in their lives. We were the college of the barrio. We were basically being educated by our community and our own students would ask questions. We had to think hard. <clears throat> to answer, giving them a good answer that made sense to them. It was a revolution in, in, in the arts. 
in poetry, in music, murals went up everywhere. By April, of course, there was the whole incident of Chicano Park. They promised the, stu the Logan Heights residents there was gonna be a park there. And then they, they decided to renege on that. And they said, no, we're gonna make a highway patrol station here rather than make it into a, a park. In the year 1970, in the city of San Diego, under the Coronado Bridge, light a little piece of land. A little piece of land that the Chicano community of Logan Heights wanted to make into a park. A park where all the chavalitos could come and play in, so they wouldn't have to play in the street and get run over by a car. A park where all the viejitos could come in the tarde and just sit down and watch the sun go down. We were in uh, Gil Robledo's class, and uh, uh, Mario Solis comes walking in and says, hey, they're going to build a police station where we want to park. And uh, we just kind of stood up. So we all went down to the park, and then we are all part of the uh, occupation of the park for 12 days. There were residents there and some students from City College there at the time when the bulldozers arrived and they stepped in front of the bulldozers and went and wouldn't let them do their work. My colleagues at City College were, were the first ones down on the line in Chicano Park. We have a, a, a role to play in helping not just, again, you know, um, move students through academically, but conscientization, raising consciousness, raising um, awareness, um, developing identity, um, critical thinking, you know, um, encouraging students to learn um, not just about abstract things, you know, academics, but taking what they're learning, analyzing and applying it to the, the realities and the conditions of their own lives and their communities. Many students ask us, why Chicano Chicano Stories? And the way that we usually answer this question is, well, it's a way to learn about yourself, where you could understand better who you are, where you are coming from, what is your history, and what is your perspective. To be Chicano, to be Chicana, to be Chicanex, is a way to um, open avenues to understand what is your position in this world. Yeah, that first semester I ended up taking uh Chicano Chicano history class um, and it wasn't just the class it was everything that happened afterwards um, I became politically active he, that first year was really difficult because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to continue my education and it was the fact that the Chicano Chicano studies department professors were constantly there sort of supporting us that ended up being the reason why I left chemistry and and chose um, Chicano Chicano studies the class not didn't just teach me about Mexican history, but it helped me understand why my family migrated, why um, I was in the economic position that I was in and my parents were in. My, my parents are both laborers. Um, I'm a first generation college student. For the first time, things clicked for me. And for the first time, I felt empowered. I felt um, proud and I also, it was extremely motivating for me as a student. I would say Gloria and Saldua's Borderlands, La Frontera is one of the most impacting books, pieces of literature, impacting on me, but also on students. I mean, that book um, was, is uh, life-changing and consciousness changing, if you will. And uh, students have told me, you know, for the first time, I feel validated in who I am because I don't speak Spanish very well, or I'm a pocha, or I'm a pocho, right? And, and Gloria Anzaldúa talks about that in, in her work. After reading Occupied America and opening my eyes to different literature and curriculum material that really pointed out um, the American experiment and how my community wasn't really considered part of the American experiment. And, and that's wrong because the American experience is all of us. I think if I hadn't taken a Chicano studies class to stimulate that part of, of my interest, I don't know that I would have stayed in academia. And I think the spark of Chicano studies gave me reason 
to want to fulfill an academic um, career. Something that Chicana Chicano Studies courses have offered students is, um, is you know, a way to, to think critically, to question you know, what they've learned, to, 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 to look at different perspectives, you know, to, to, to center themselves, their experiences into the learning process and that's transformative. When I started taking classes at Chicana Studies, I started getting involved in the community. I come from an indigenous community. Uh, myself, I am a mixed tech. Uh, you know, we have a long history of migration to this country. I know that the, the professors in this department are really dedicated, you know, uh, and that sparked a, a fire in, within me to be able, to wanting to be involved and to wanting to learn more. So all of those conversations, you know, I feel like I had the space to, to talk about here. Uh, yes, there was a lot of, you know, disagreements, but that is the world we live in. You know, you agree, you disagree. Don't be afraid to question, you know, because a lot of things with education, they teach us to be, to not question what the professor is telling. But, you know, I had to question. Both my parents were really active in the Chicano movement you know, in the 60s and in the 70s. And so for me, I never really had learned a lot of that history um, at school growing up. Learning about my own history, you know, learning about my family's history, being able to understand what my parents grew up with, right, and, and how they came over. Even, like, in thinking about, like, my grandparents and, and their personal history, like, my, my father's parents came to the U.S. through the Bracero program. I had no idea what that was about until I took these courses. We were reading Teatro Campesino, you know, um, by Luis Valdez and the farm working struggle. Um, we read Corky Gonzalez. We read, um, you know, I am Joaquin um, and uh, Jose Montoya. And so for me, that class, I feel like, okay, there's something here. We talked about white supremacy, racism, um, solidarity with black people, the, the, um, that was also very important as well. I think that Chicano studies isn't just about Mexicans, right? It isn't just about learning about Mexican Americans in this country. It's about all oppressed people. <laughs> Because once you empower a student to think critically about themselves, their identities, their communities, what they're experiencing, they also can become transformed into agents of change, into people who commit themselves to wanting to strive to overcome those conditions and, and to empower other people and to, and to, be, to be a force you know, within their communities. Uh, for change and social transformation. And education, it's not just about teaching the content, it's about how you teach it and, and how you make students feel in the classroom and about teaching students to not accept their own oppression. And so that's what this, these classes did. I mean, the teachers weren't just teaching us about this history, they, it was the way that they taught. And, um, and the way that they made students feel in the classroom. And so we could always discuss our current issues in a historical context, um, while at the same time encouraged to, you know, participate in everything that's going on in the campus. It, they really created a sense of family within the, the classes of like, even telling each other our own stories, right? Like, and it was always very personal. It was never like, a, let me, teach you, learn all these facts, and let's have a test so that you can regurgitate all this stuff. I think we were pretty fortunate to be part of an institution that was allowed us to, to be able to speak up. So one of the things that stands as a major contribution to Justice for Immigrants from San Diego City College has to do with student-led organizing around 2006 at a time when there was an intensified criminalization of undocumented people in this country. We helped organize getting people up to LA for the, the Gran Marcha. 
So we were able to get buses and uh, transport people from City College up to LA. So that was fun, actually, um, being on the bus and, and getting into LA and just seeing this wall of people. You know, like literally like a street over, you just see this, this river of people just marching. <laughs> Um, I'm a member of Resistencia Estudiantil over at San Diego City College. I'm a student there. I've uh, been getting involved um, slowly but surely um, with the events, or I should say some of, the, some of the activities that they've been having. We're a club um, and we mainly focused on you know, issues at the border, um, in particular um, undocumented immigrants and like their struggles and how do we support them. But we're right next to the border and a lot of the students that come here, you know, they're migrating back and forth. We're really rooted, right, with communities here that are of migrant people. We saw a lot of students that we call transfronterizos or, or fronterizos. Uh, we have some, some, some students who they, they say, well, I identified as a Mexican, I identified as a Chicanx. Uh, but really what identif identified me is the experience to have to cross the border every day. We need to culturally to dissolve this border and to understand that we have uh, experiences that are valid, that are important, and in this way not to criticize when people speak another language. I think it gives them a language to talk about their experience, to talk about um, you know, why their parents are deported or why they have to cross the border every day, why, um, you know, Border Patrol rides around the City College trolley station. Binational students, you know, the students that will come from Tijuana and they will stay here late hours, you know, making banners, <laughs> being involved, and then they will have to go back, to come back in the morning. That was education and that was, you know, something that I always admire. April of 2006, the students led a very significant uh, march from City College to join another march that was winding through San Diego and concluded in the downtown area. The students, at least 500, but maybe a thousand students left the campus to join this march. And it ended up being about 100,000 people and it took over all of the downtown area here. That was part of a number of days of action around the country that culminated in the May 1st um, Day Without an Immigrant around the country. This 50th anniversary, I'm very happy to be part of it, in part because one of the very first things that I learned being in Chicano Chicano Studies was that we stand on the shoulders of giants. It's incredible that the department has been able to to survive this long, and especially in a hostile environment, I would say. Um, it was never easy to establish the department. I think the Chicano Chicano Studies Department here and almost everywhere are born out of struggle. And I think struggle is what's gonna continue to you know, save them. Over that 50 years, we've seen the rate of students graduating, uh, having had taken uh, Chicano Chicano Studies, we see, we've seen that increase. I'm confident that Chicano Studies will, will survive. It makes me feel, on the one hand, very proud and very optimistic, and on the other hand, it makes me feel like we need to keep fighting for, for Chicano Studies, for Ethnic Studies, and to help keep, keep these departments going, and not just barely surviving, but thriving. <laughs> It's not just learning about your culture, but it's also learning about yourself and let help, helping you analyze your place in the world and feel okay and empowered about your place in the world and who you are and who your family is. It's okay if your parents don't speak English or didn't go to college. Coming here, and uh, gaining my education also opened up a way for me to be able to accept and, 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 uh, and support issues that were important. 
for the civil rights movement. You know, what was important for me coming here was finding out my identity, finding out um, who I was, finding out why this city is called San Diego and yet we're not allowed to speak Spanish in our schools, you know. Um, and so that's what Chicano Studies provided me and I think that it can provide that for a lot of other people. It really taught me how to be a good organizer and a good activist. City College was uh, very nurturing and I, to this day I, I recommend people um, that are unsure what they want to do to go to a community college. I think we need to you know, let our, our, our youth know that there's nothing wrong coming to a community college first. Learn about who you are, take a Chicano course to, to understand who you are and what you can do about, uh, about what you're learning. The value of Chicano studies is because it shows everybody that there is a value to other people that other people have contributed to the making of this nation. Community college offers, and City College in particular, I think um, is a, a place of community. You know, I feel like it does live up to that name of community college. It's like it's a place to build community where you're welcomed, where you're not made to feel dumb for not knowing something. It's more relevant now than it's ever been. and. Um, it will continue to be relevant as long as we live in a society where the system, systematic racism, discrimination, and underdevelopment of whole communities uh, so that others can profit and gain and retain power and control in our society, uh, as long as there's those dynamics at play, there will always be a need uh, for Chicano Chicano studies and that fundamental framework of Chicano Chicano studies, which basically sees education connected to and empowering a larger struggle of social transformation. Keep on going. Keep going to college. Get your degrees. We need lawyers. We need doctors. We need everything. And, and be aware of what's going on. Develop your consciousness.